Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospital. <laughs> I almost forgot where I was there for a second. Welcome, welcome, and welcome back to many of you um, who have joined us in the past. I'm looking forward to this evening's program, Seasonal Dinners for One. Um, this is a great class because a lot of the times we find ourselves cooking for one or two people. And um, it's, you know, it's great to have recipes that you can count on being delicious, um, you know, health supportive. And that's really what we're striving to do. And simple too, right? Because sometimes when you're just cooking for one or two people, you want to do something that's lovely, but not complicated, right? So that's kind of our goal for the class today is to introduce you to a few new recipes um, that feature, of course, lots of wonderful seasonal ingredients. So it is August, believe it or not, here we are. Um, and we've got some great seasonal produce to feature today. So we are working with our garden tomatoes. I, I have just, these ones are from the garden and these ones are from the store because my tomatoes are still just starting to come in here at the organic garden. Um, we have our zucchini. This is not ours, this is also from the store, but it's coming, it's coming. So you're gonna be ready when zucchinis are hitting the farmer's markets. I think they're already there. I caught some last weekend. So um, you can definitely find them. Some green beans or in our case, slightly purplish beans and um, some potatoes as well as basil. So lots of great seasonal produce. Our berries are being featured as well. Um, so this is sort of the idea with this class. And thank you all so much for joining. If you have questions, we have our magnificent moderator joining us, Alita. Um, hi, Alita, welcome. And you can put your questions into the chat box and she will read them to me. So that way we can make sure we get to all your questions. And thank you so much for being here. So we're going to get started. Actually, um, we're making three recipes today. The first one is what I just call berries and cream. <laughs> so it's a, a slightly indulgent, um, but also pretty light because we're working with half and half. And then we're having a little bit of sugar. Um, we're going to steep some chamomile tea. So you can buy chamomile tea loose. Or if you want to cut open the tea bags, you can do it that way too. Either one is fine. Um, a little bit of sugar, not much in this, in this recipe. We're going to crush some pistachios. And you can buy shelled pistachios that are unsalted pretty much everywhere. I was in the, I was in the um, CBS earlier today. And just along the checkout line, um, I found un, you know, unshelled, unsalted pistachios. So it's kind of great that we can now find these things at a pharmacy. Who knew? A uh, little bit of yogurt is going into this, giving us some nice prebiotic material, uh, probiotic material with our prebiotic material, the berries. We'll talk more about that later. So that's going to be our dessert. We're going to start with dessert, and then we're going to make our, what I'm calling a warm vegetable salad. So this is nice because you kind of boil all the veggies together at different times. So we'll start with the potato, then we'll add in the green beans, and then the zucchini. I think I got that right. Potato first then beans, then zucchini. So it's kind of staggered. Um, and then it all gets tossed together in a wonderful vinaigrette topped with some basil and pine nuts. And then our final dish is a shrimp dish. I think shrimp is a great thing if you're just cooking for one person or two people or a small amount of people. You know, it's just very easy to keep in the freezer and you can pick out the number of shrimp that you want to eat defrost it, and then, you know, pop, pop it in your pan to make this dish. So that's our class today. So let's begin with berries. I'm going to start by heating up this, um, this half and half. And if you want to use some kind of vegan uh, variety, you can use your favorite non-dairy kind of unsweetened creamer because we're going to sweeten it. So this is just going to get heated up about a third of a cup. We're going to add some sugar to this. And you have the quantities in your packets. Um, I actually noticed for this particular recipe, as I was writing out the directions, I accidentally wrote how much sugar and how much tea. If you notice in this packet, it's slightly different than our other packets. So let me walk you through that in a moment. I'm adding a pinch, a pinch, a pinch of our chamomile leaves to the berries, and the rest of it's going in with the cream to steep in there and give it this really lovely chamomile flavor. And we're going to let that steep together. Just kind of bring it to simmer, dissolve the sugar, and, um, and then we'll strain it. So we'll have this lovely kind of infused, um, infused cream. 
So just to walk you through something in the packet here, you may notice these recipes look a little bit different than usual. So what I did is I scaled them for you. I don't know if you guys see that very well. So I did serves two, serves four, serves six. So I scaled them. So if you're following the recipe just for two people, you know what quantities to use. If you're following it for one, three, or six, or, or whatever else, you can um, adjust accordingly. So that was another thing that I did special for this cooking for one class because so many recipes are written for four to six to 10 people. Um, and I do that all the time myself. So um, that, that's another thing that I want to, to do for this class. Okay, so we have our berries, a little bit of um, sugar. I'm using raspberries and blueberries and I'm kind of just mashing them up a little bit with the wooden spoon. The sugar will start to kind of draw out the, um, the fruit, the, all the juices from the fruit. So you just want to let that sit for about 15 minutes or so. So it's going to draw everything out. This is going to come to just a simmer and then we'll strain it. Um, very, very simple. We're just going to let it simmer barely. So this below a boil, right? You don't want to boil your half and half. Then we'll let it steep, strain it and cool it. We'll add the yogurt. We'll top it with uh, crushed pistachios. And that's going to be this dish. So you can see it's very easy. It's lovely, but not complicated, right? So this is just starting to come to a simmer. You can see the steam is coming off of it. Perfect. So now I'm going to turn it off and just let it steep. Okay. So I'll set this to the side and we'll come back to it. Do we have any questions about that first recipe? No questions yet, Chef Emily. Okay. So we're going to finish that off. Everything just needs, the berries need to macerate. The juices need to come out and then the, the cream needs to steep and have all that good flavor coming. All right, so our next step is the warm summer vegetable salad. And for this one, this is a pretty simple one. It's just two steps. I have a pot of salted water boiling back here. I don't know if you can see it there. Um, so you wanna get that ready. The first step is gonna be to add your potato. So I have a Yukon gold potato. You can peel it if you want to, but there's no need. And then you're just going to cut it into, this one's kind of medium size, so I'm going to cut it into uh, eight pieces. So they should be about, about this big. You could also use the little fingerling potatoes if you wanted to do that. So I'll pop those in. That's going to boil for about 10 minutes or so, so let's set the timer. And then while that's boiling, let's make this little vinaigrette um, thing we got going on here. I think I saw a question pop through. Yes, um, someone had a question about the, where to find the recipes, but you usually send them and you will send them again at the end, so. Yes, exactly. So um, I had some questions about this earlier as well. So the way we, our, our, our process is not fully automated. I actually send out a reminder email to everybody um, the day of the class. And if you registered the same day, I'll send it to you after class. All right, so thank you for your patience and I will make sure you have it um, by the end of the day. So our second uh, recipe, we have some red onion. I had a quarter of a red onion left, left over from another dish. So I wanted to use that up, which is perfect because that's really all I need for this recipe. So we're gonna peel off that papery exterior, trim off the top here because that's still quite papery. And then we're just gonna go for very thin slices and we're gonna marinate this onion in some white balsamic vinegar with anchovy paste. So I'm not an anchovy fan. I'm just gonna go out and say that. I'm not an anchovy fan. I'm not a sardine fan. I find that they have very strong fishy tastes, um, but I'm trying to find ways to love them because they're really lovely little small fish that are um, environmentally, they're quite sustainable. And from a health perspective, they happen to be some of the fish that are highest in the omega-3 fatty acids. So we know those are really good for us um, and they are hard to get unless you eat you know, lots of salmon and things like that. Um, but even some salmon, it's not all created equally. So I'm trying to figure out you know, how can I enjoy these small little fish. So I came across this anchovy paste and I think you can find it at most grocery stores now. And we're gonna whisk this in. And basically the way I'm thinking about it is it's gonna be my salt, right? So anchovies can add a lot of salts to a dish. So if you're adding your vinegar, 
with your onion. And that's going to help to kind of draw out some of the harshness of the red onion, which I find to be a bit much sometimes. Then you have a little bit, of, this is what the anchovy paste looks like. It looks like this very gray kind of <laughs> sad looking thing. But if you whisk it in there, it kind of disintegrates. It's a way to kind of like sneak in anchovies without all of the kind of anchoviness, if that makes sense. Kind of whisk that in, push your onions down into that. And then we're gonna let that sit. Again, everything just gets to sit today, except for me. <laughs> We're gonna slice up some garlic as well. I'm gonna take off the top and the bottom. This is garlic from our organic garden. We're very lucky. We had a wonderful, wonderful garlic crop. It's very exciting this year. I think garlic is like one of those magical, magical foods because you put in one little clove of garlic in October and then you know around July or August, you pull out a whole head. It's kind of like, you know, a slow magic trick. It's really cool. So it takes a long time, but it's worth it because you get this sensational garlic that's um, really flavorful, very good for you. All right, so I'm just peeling off, a little bit harder to peel, I'm noticing than the store-bought stuff, maybe because it's fresher. I'm peeling that off. Sorry, my earpiece is falling out. And then I'm gonna slice this very, very thin. Now I don't need a lot of garlic. Again, I'm just making this recipe in small quantity. So a couple things about garlic, if you like crush it and smash it and, you know, kind of rough it up, it's going to have a stronger taste. But if you're kind of gentle with it, like I am here and you cut it into slices, it's going to have a milder flavor, like a little bit of a milder flavor. So it responds to how you, um, how you manipulate it. All right. So this is our little allium mixture, right? So we're going to let that sit. And then in the meantime, we're going to get everything else ready. We're going to have some olive oil tossed into this. Some toasted pine nuts are going to go on top of this. And then I have some wonderful fresh basil. So I'm just going to kind of bunch this up, roll it, and then slice across. So this is called chiffonade, when you stack your basil leaves. And then you roll them up into a little tiny basil burrito. And then slice across. You get these lovely basil ribbons of joy. And they smell so good. All right, so you can see chiffon in French means little rag, chiffon. So chiffonade is like a little, little rags. That's, I guess that's where it comes from. All right, let's get our zucchini ready because that's going to go in with the potato in about five minutes. So we're going to trim off the top. Trim off the bottom and then cut it in half and we're gonna cut it into, you can go for um, half moons or you can go for slices. I kind of like the quarter moons myself. That's when you cut it in half and then you cut it in half again. And then you can go across into these kind of nice chunky bite-sized pieces, right? So you don't want them to be so thin that they completely disintegrate. You want them to hold their shape. So I would say each piece is maybe half an inch thick. Let's see, I can hold this up a little bit closer so you can see, All right? So this is gonna go in with our potatoes in a moment. Okay, I'll set this off to the side. We can get our beans ready here. The beans are gonna, um, make sure you take the tops off. And um, green beans, first of all, they're very low calorie. So one cup of green beans has about 33 calories. Um, there's a lot of fiber in, in green beans, which is wonderful, about four grams per cup. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention about green beans is you want to look for beans that are firm and they're sort of bright in color. So you can see these are quite, you know, they're firm. There is no mushy spots. There's no kind of like discoloration. They're the color that they're supposed to be for this purple variety. <laughs> um, and you just want to make sure that you um, use green beans as soon as possible after harvesting or purchasing them. You don't want them to sit around in the refrigerator for too long. It kind of, they kind of lose their crispness and freshness. So I'm going to make this super easy. I'm just going to kind of bundle this up and just do one big chop down the middle. Everything will be, you know, about more or less the same size. I'm not gonna, no fuss, you know, everything should just kind of be a little bit larger than bite size, okay? So um, a note on our zucchini, 
the zucchini that we're using is store-bought, but if you're, you know, growing it yourself, that's wonderful. Hopefully we will have some later this month. Um, zucchini is actually in the same botanical family as melons and spaghetti squash um, and cucumbers. So the variety that we most use, the kind that you saw today, was first developed in Italy in the early 1800s. Um, again, it's a very low calorie vegetable. Uh, one cup has 17 calories, so almost half of the green beans. Um, and there's lots of different vitamins and minerals in zucchini. Most people think of it as just being like a watery vegetable, but there's actually a lot of vitamin A in there, um, as well as some minerals. So it's particularly high in that vitamin A, which is increased when you cook it. Um, and then um, another thing is it contains two types of fiber. The two types of fiber, both soluble and insoluble. So it's a great kind of low carb fiber um, alternative to pasta, for example. I use it a lot. I'm going to be making a zucchini kind of raw zucchini lasagna later this month, which is just like cutting it very, very thinly. And then we make these different, it's going to be delicious. So there's lots of ways to use it, which I love. All right. So our onions are doing nice here. They're starting to soften a little bit, right? Which is great. Soften up a bit. Um, just want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything today. We put, the, we put the garlic, we put the onion, the anchovy paste, the vinegar. We didn't add salts because the anchovies are kind of acting as salt. And we're boiling our potatoes. Okay, and now it's been about nine minutes. So we're ready to add our beans. So in go the green beans. This has been salted. This water has been salted. Okay, and we're gonna let those go. I'm gonna set my watch now. So you can see I'm kind of staggering the cooking. So those will go for about two minutes. Then we're gonna add the uh, zucchini. And I'm gonna need a strainer. I think I left that over here. So you wanna have a strainer ready so everything can come out. Then once it's out, we're gonna toss it with this um, onion mixture, a little bit of olive oil, pine nuts, and basil. So that's how this all kind of comes together. And I like to kind of mash up the potato just a little bit in there so you get that starchiness that kind of binds the whole dish. Any questions or comments? I know I'm going to Yes. <laughs> yes, Chef Emily. Sorry. So um, one of the attendees says she's allergic to balsamic vinegar. What else can oh, she okay. use? You can use sherry vinegar. Sherry vinegar or apple cider vinegar would be fine. And if vinegars are out of the question for you, this would probably work well with a fresh lemon juice too. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a question about are the yellow, um, I guess squash more nutritious than the green zucchinis? Yeah, so they're, they're not, they're pretty equivalent. This yellow summer squash and the green zucchini are very, very similar in terms of, um, in terms of nutrient profile. If you're talking about like the spaghetti squash, which is a little bit bigger. I, I think the question is about summer squash, which is um, sort of the yellow version of zucchini and they can be used interchangeably, but spaghetti squash has a slightly different profile, nutrient profile. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit starchier than zucchini, but yeah. And then there was a question about the dark versus green beans. Oh, okay. Dark versus green beans. Well, these are purple beans um, that we grew uh, here at the garden, right out back. But the funny thing about purple beans is as soon as you cook them, they turn green anyway. <laughs> so it's just, it's just a funny, I don't know, a funny variety. That's it for now, Chef Emily. Okay, very good. Um, onions, of course, we're using some onions in this dish. Great, high in nutrients, vitamins B, C, potassium, uh, high in fiber as well. Very concentrated antioxidant potential as well. Um, I always find that surprising about onions because we don't really think of onions as being like a kind of particularly nutrient dense food, but they have a lot going on. And then garlic, of course, we've got that wonderful garlic in there. Um, the sulfur compounds are formed when the garlic is chopped and that's really what helps to support our immune system. Um, interesting, interesting connection between garlic and reducing blood pressure. I'm not sure you know, where, where everything is out with that yet, but um, it's delicious and it's good for you. Uh, there might even be some cholesterol benefits. So why not include a little bit of fresh garlic in your dishes? Okay, and then I didn't mention the potato primarily because there's not a lot to say about potatoes, <laughs> but it's a, it's a starchy carbohydrate. It does have some fiber. Um, I like it in this dish because it kind of binds everything together. And, um, and it's, you know, it's not completely devoid of nutrients. There is some potassium in there as well. So, um, so yeah, that's our, that's our little nutrient rundown. All right, let's put our zucchini in. The beans have been in for two minutes. So you can see everything's going into the same pot and we're just kind of staggering the cooking time because 
potatoes are the hardest, then go the green beans, then zucchinis are the softest. So they take the least amount of time to cook. Okay, so let's get ready as that's kind of wrapping up. We have a couple more minutes on that dish. I wanna go back to our berries and cream over here. This has had a nice chance to kind of steep together. So you can see now the berries are starting to release some of their juices. I don't know if you can see that very well, but the sugars dissolve, the berries are kind of relaxing in there. And then we're gonna add that steeped cream. So this is our half and half. And it looks like this. It does not look particularly delicious, but it smells amazing. It smells like chamomile. So you can use your little spoon. And you can use different teas if you want to, you know, if you prefer a different kind of tea, feel free to do that. So I have my cream. I'm gonna put it through my little strainer here. Get as much as that. And we're not using very much, right? We're just using like a little more than a quarter cup, maybe a third of a cup. Kind of press that through. I like to add the yogurt to this. Again, I always like to try to match my prebiotics with my probiotics. So what do I mean by that? These berries have wonderful um, prebiotic material, meaning they have great fiber, especially the raspberries. And then you're matching it with a little bit of yogurt. And that's kind of giving that probiotic boost. So this is done. How simple, right? How simple, how flavorful. You can save this for up to three days in the refrigerator and you can just kind of have it as a wonderful um, treat for yourself. I like to, you know, top it with those pistachios. So I'm gonna give this a little chop. <laughs> I know I just cut through a zucchini. So these pistachios are probably gonna taste a little bit like onion or zucchini or something. So it's better to clean your knife between jobs. You can, um, but I don't want you all to, you know, suffer my running water. All right, so we've got our beautiful bowl here. You can pop that in and then top it with the crushed pistachios, just for a little crunch and another little, um, another little nutrient boost, right? How pretty, how simple, lovely, but not complicated. That's the goal for today. I'm gonna put more pistachios, why not? All right, so with that, um, of course, with your berries, you're getting tons and tons of antioxidants. Um, your pistachios are, have been cultivated for over 8,000 years. They're very energy dense. They're rich in protein. They have really great healthy fats in there for you, monounsaturated fats, um, and more fiber. So lots of, you know, lots of, you know, stuff getting packed into this great dessert. Um, there's an interesting pistachio cholesterol kind of connection that they may actually reduce the LDL cholesterol that's kind of still being studied, but they're delicious, so try to, you know, enjoy them from time to time. And if you find that you can't stop yourself, if you buy the bag of pistachios and you just keep eating it, buy the shelled ones. Create a little obstacle for yourself to get through to them, right? They are so tasty, so it's easy to kind of go through a bag pretty quickly. All right, so we're ready to strain off our vegetables here. Let's just see if our potato is cooked through. That's the most important one, right? I'm just going to grab a piece of that. And how do you know if it's cooked through, right? If it kind of smashes, yeah, see, smashes easily. It's nice and soft. This is perfect. So this is all done. I'm going to put it in my strainer. I'm going to strain everything off of here. So I like this because in the summertime, we usually make, you know, cold salads, which is really nice. But from time to time, I really crave something that's, you know, just a little, I don't know, a little warm, a little like cozy, especially we've been having, you know, some chillier evenings. So it's nice to have something kind of cooked and cozy. Um, so that's kind of where this is all coming from. So remember, we've got our onions, our vinegar, or our vinegar alternative, if that's what you're using, our, um, our garlic in here. And that's been sitting for about 10 minutes or so to kind of soften up the, that onion. We're going to add, this is it, simple boiled, you know, stuff, good veg. Always, always room for good veg at the table. And then you're just going to want to toss that together. We're going to add some olive oil, of course. This dish has to have olive oil. 
to kind of complete it. And you're just going to kind of smash, like I mentioned, smash those potatoes up a little bit as you go to kind of thicken this because otherwise it's going to be like um, more of a vinaigrette, like not so, you know, I kind of like to smash them to give this a little more body, like more potato salad style than, you know, vinegar salad thing. I'm having a hard time finding my words today. Everything is like a thing or stuff. <laughs> things and stuff right all right okay so there it is our warmed summer vegetable salad we have our toasted pine nuts going on top our beautiful chiffonaded basil oh my gosh and look at this a meal fit for a meal fit for a king right for a queen or any kind of household royalty I'll plate this up and then we'll make our final dish. Questions or comments? Yes, there are two questions about the berries and cream. Um, can you use fat-free half and half or lactose-free milk in the berry recipe? So use any kind of, you know, uh, dairy variety that you enjoy. I would say like, don't buy anything that you haven't tried yet. You know, if you don't know, you're trying to make this a, a dairy-free variety and you've never had a dairy-free kind of half and half, just, just try to use something that you're kind of familiar with um, if you can. If you don't have that option, I guess you could use, I'm trying to think of like what's a good alternative. Um, I mean, certainly I think lactose-free half and half usually doesn't have sugar in it, usually, um, but I'm not too sure. Alita, do you have suggestions on the dairy-free part? I know you are a dairy-free fan. Um, you know, for me, it's just don't use anything that has any strong flavorings in it because sometimes yeah. those things just really muck it up. But anything right. would be great with this um, berries and cream. You know, I wonder, you could probably use like uh, a cashew milk, like mm -hmm. a real, one of those really nice thick cashew milks. Mm -hmm. Um, or even coconut milk, but then you'd have that coconut flavor. Um, which might somebody, be okay. somebody wrote oat milk or yogurt. Oh yeah, the oat milks are nice and thick. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe like, um, I know there's, uh, there's one oat milk that, you know, says it's like, quote, full fat. Maybe something like that could work. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for chiming in. And then there was a, a question about what's a good substitute for the potato in the warm vegetable salad? So the potato really is like one of the central ingredients to this dish because it kind of, as you can see, it kind of thickens everything and binds it all together. Um, but if you, you know, if you wanted to make this, you could simply make this without potato. It's going to be a slightly different um, kind of, you know, experience. I think it will still be delicious. Um, you know what would actually be good is cannellini beans or butter beans. That would be delicious. So you could bust open your can of cannellini beans, drain them off, mash them up a little bit, and then mix those in. I think that would work well. Cannellini or butter beans. That would kind yes, of give it that same, you know, connection consistency. Someone um, also says something about sweet potato. But um, Chef Emily, um, somebody pointed out, Patricia, that in the recipe for the warm summer vegetable on the salt yeah. and pepper, you have a pound. I guess <laughs> that's a typo. Yeah. Thanks, Patricia. Patricia's my proofreader over yes. there. So definitely not a pound. No way, Jose. Um, I think that was about sweet potato or something. Oh, on one yeah. Serving. You know what? I think yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry that that line I guess didn't get edited out. So under salt and pepper, warm summer vegetable salad. I'm going to correct this and send it back to all of you. Thank you, for, Patricia, for noticing. So under salt and pepper, it should just say to taste. Yeah, salt and pepper to taste. Thank you. I need more proofreaders in my life. All right, so moving on to our summer savory shrimp. Um, we're gonna start by, as you can see, drawing off the shrimp really, really well, because we're gonna wanna brown it a little bit. So I've got my skillet going. I've got my, oops, I better stop my watch here. Okay. I've got a little bit of oil going down in the pan. 
And then you just want to make sure it sizzles. Yeah, perfect. A nice sizzle and you're ready to go. You've got stuck with paper towels because they're so dry. <laughs> That's perfect though. We don't want any wet shrimp in there because otherwise they won't brown. They'll just kind of steam. That's no good. All right. So it's useful to have a set of tongs. I don't know if you can see some are kind of on top of each other here. So the tongs kind of help you to space them out. Make sure that each shrimp has its own little spot on the pan. You don't want to overcrowd it, right? You want to make sure it's like everybody has their little space in the pool. And uh, you just want to cook it till it's lightly brown on both sides. Um, and it will go from, shrimp is wonderful because it goes from being gray to being like nice and pink and lightly brown. And that's how you know that it's done. So while that's going, let's get our other ingredients ready here. We've got some tomatoes going in. So I'm just going to go ahead and chop these up. Everything should just be kind of bite-sized chunks. Um, I'm using, <coughs> excuse me, this is the, the supermarket variety Kumato, K-U-M-A-T-O. I don't know, um, I don't know what kind of variety that is, but I find that for a supermarket tomato, it's kind of like the best one out there. This green one, this is from our garden. This is a green zebra. You can see how beautiful it is. And this one is green, but it's actually ripe. It's um, just this kind of variety of tomato. So you can use, you know, whatever nice ripe tomatoes you have on hand, that's what you're going to want to use. So we've got some cherries, we've got, you know, some kumato, we've got some green zebras, right? So the important thing is it doesn't really matter what kind of tomato you use, as long as it is a right kind of um, peak of the season tomato for this dish, it's going to make all the difference, I think, in terms of how this dish tastes. All right, so I'm just cutting these in half to kind of help it release their juices. Okay. And then with the shrimp, you can see they're starting to turn pink. They're browning a little bit. So each one kind of gets flipped over. Now shrimp, again, uh, a great kind of low calorie protein source. Um, these are peeled, de-veined, tails on. I like to buy shrimp that are tails on because I find that, first of all, the shells actually give food flavor. So when you take off all the shells, you're really, um, you're really doing yourself a disservice because you're losing out on some of that wonderful shrimp flavor. Um, so I like to leave the tails on, but if you find that, you know, it's inconvenient, it's uncomfortable, you don't like to eat them that way, you know, you have to do it in a way that works for you. So if you buy it with the tails off, that's fine. You're not going to get fewer, fewer points. All right. So these are nice and pink. They're um, lightly brown. Let me get my oven mitt out here. And I can show you what to look for in this pan. Right? See that? So this step is ready. So I'm now going to take the shrimp out. We're going to put it back in again later. So this is step one. I'm using cast iron because I guess I like to suffer. <laughs> This is my weight for the day. So shrimp comes out. All right, you don't have to use cast iron. You can use something, you know, lighter, as long as it's some kind of nonstick, you know, wonderful pan that you love, that's fine with me. So we heated our skillet, we added the oil and our dry, dry shrimp. We browned it lightly. It's nice and pink. Now we're gonna remove it and set it aside. It's a quick process. You don't wanna take too long. We've got some more garlic going into this dish. So, sorry, you're watching me do this twice. Trim the top, trim the bottom. Slice it in half to kind of peel the paper off. Same as like a tiny onion. All right, it's always a little harder with the uh, fresh garlic. And then I'm just going to slice this up. Oh, this is really such a nice garlic. It's really firm. It's like, has a really good smell. Smells like garlic, but, you know, like fresh garlic. I don't know. To me, it smells a little bit different. And it's very sticky. <laughs> We're gonna go for thin slices. And I have my pan on a very low heat because we don't wanna burn our garlic. Garlic goes fast. So thin slices. Okay, and it goes, let's get a little bit of heat on that. And we're gonna add, um, ooh, we're gonna add some, it's very sticky. <laughs> we're gonna add some seasonings to this. 
just going to move that around the pan. We're going to add some um, crushed fennel seeds and red pepper flakes. So we just want to activate those spices, right? So put them in there, sprinkle them around, let them get a little bit of heat, start to bloom. You know, that heat activates that flavor, right? Um, and then we're going to add the tomatoes. Uh, well, first, we're going to add wine because we want to deglaze the pan and get up all that flavor. Then we're going to add tomatoes and olives. So we have some pitted Kalamata olives. Those will go in there. And then I have this wonderful, look how pretty this is. This wonderful kind of feathery herb. Wonder if you guys can guess what it is. Um, it is oregano. So this is a nice kind of a variety of oregano. I forget which one it is, but we grew it here in the garden as well. It smells really good. And I'm just gonna pick the leaves off the stems. I can't believe how sticky this garlic is. My <laughs> everything is sticking to my hands. It's just amazing. Questions or comments? Yeah, there were two additions to the potato um, substitute. Um, okay. Gail said sweet potato and Teresa said butternut squash. Um, okay, but, interesting. But Judy also noted that, um, you know, she can't eat string beans or is oh, there yeah. some kind of a substitute for that? So for the string beans, I would leave those out. They're kind of their, you know, their own. So you could do like maybe a, a carrot or something like that. So you can... I mean, you could do anything with this, with this kind of veggie salad. I think the sweet potato and the squash, um, you know, while they are kind of thought of as a potato substitute in this dish, I feel like they would make it a little too sweet. So you could try it. Let me know what you think. Um, but certainly that's one of the reasons I didn't mention those. So we're adding our wine. We're going to let that deglaze for about a minute. Get all the good flavors, simmer in the garlic. Now we're gonna add our tomatoes. And we do wanna bring this up a bit so the tomatoes start to break down in the heat. <coughs> Excuse me, ooh, that wine went right up into my lungs. Oh my goodness. Let's chop up our pitted Kalamata olives. Now, whenever you're working with Kalamata olives, even if it says pitted or any olive, even if it says pitted, be be mindful. <laughs> Sometimes the machines miss a pick. So, you know, once I've been making a, an olive tapenade and they just, you know, threw them all into the food processor, well, it got stuck to my food processor um, blade and it was like Excalibur, like sword in the stone, kind of like couldn't pull the, the uh, pit off the blade because it had been kind of um, stuck on there. So just be careful with your olives. Make sure that there's really no pits, even if it says pitted. Any other questions or comments? Yes, um, this. Th there is a, is there a substitute for feta cheese? Leave it out. So I'm actually going to leave it out in this recipe. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to have the feta cheese. I'm noticing that my headphones are beeping. Is my audio okay? Your audio is okay. It sounds a little muffled, but it's only sometimes yeah. when you turn your face a little. <laughs> Okay, it's really strange. This happened last week and I thought it was because I didn't um, charge my headphones, but they've been sitting in charge for, all right, how is it now? Better. Anything? Better? Better? Yeah, it, it has been a little staticky and somebody mentioned that on the, on the um, chat as well. All right, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go for both headphones in. <laughs> Let's see what happens. At least you can hear me, right? So I do have this kind of on a medium heat, kind of um, so that the tomatoes will start to break down. And um, instead of the feta cheese, leave it out. You don't have to have feta cheese on this dish. It's, you know, this is kind of like a nice, nice Greek flavors, but if you don't want feta, you can leave it out. Um, it would be fine with goat cheese. The feta does add some salt. So if you are going to, um, leave it out. You may need to salt your dish a little bit differently. I didn't put any salt in this dish yet because we're using those olives. Um, and I find that those olives are really salty. So that's kind of my preference. I'm going to chop up these oregano leaves. So whenever you're mincing, you want to put your hand flat on top of the knife and just chopping right across heel to tip to kind of mince it up. The fresh oregano is really, really nice. If you can't, you know, get access to fresh oregano, you can use the dried stuff, 
but I would add it in, let's see, the fresh oregano I'm adding in uh, with the shrimp in step five. If you're using dried oregano, I would add it with the olives and tomatoes in step four. <coughs> Excuse me, because the um, dried oregano needs a little bit of time to cook, okay? So you can make that exchange. All right, everyone. So we've got a wonderful, you know, seasonal dinner for one here or two. Simple tomatoes with lots of um, aromatics with our fresh herbs, our garlic, our spices. We've got that fennel seed in there. We have the red pepper flakes. These tomatoes are starting to break down and make a nice sauce. I want to show you so you can have a nice look at it. And it was pretty quick, right? This is very, you know, fairly quick. It kind of breaks down especially, you know, with these nice fresh garden varieties, those tomatoes are just exploding with flavor. They're ready to be cooked. In goes the shrimp. And on top goes the oregano. So does anyone want to share some um, seasonal dishes that they make this time of year? If they're just cooking for themselves or cooking for one or two people, what has been kind of your like go-to, you know, thing that you make that you don't want to, you know, think too much about cooking? Um, and it's August. <coughs> so if anyone wants to share, put it in the chat box and let us know, what are you making in your kitchen? You know, sometimes um, it's great to get inspiration from other people, even if it's a simple like peanut butter and jelly, but you, I don't know, maybe you toast your bread or you do something a little bit differently. You know, everybody um, has their own way of doing things. Okay. So I'm going to serve this up and turn this off. Oh, wonderful, wonderful kind of seasonal flavors here. Does anyone want to share anything, Alita? Not at this point, but oh, somebody just said to me, <laughs> Patricia. She says she yeah. makes farro salad with walnuts, fresh cherries, and celery. That sounds wonderful, Patricia. <laughs> And, and, Teresa, and Teresa says she made zucchini, olive oil, garlic, peas, spinach, and fresh basil. Ooh, wow, that sounds really mm -hmm. good. You know, maybe instead of the green beans, um, peas would be good in this dish, Teresa. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. yeah. And just a note in the recipe, I, I identified it, but uh, Mary also wrote it in, that in the salt and pepper <laughs> section, it also says a third mm -hmm. of a cup. So we, we should remove that and I save to taste. To... <laughs> yes, I, I clearly, I clearly did this like late on a Friday, you know, evening or something, because I have a few edits to make for all of you. A lot but of I'm salt. I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> please don't use a third of a cup no. of salt. Um, as much as, as much as we adore all of you, we don't want to see you here with high blood pressure. <laughs> so any, fi any final questions or comments? It's just so about yeah, that time. Um, Phyllis said gazpacho with oh, perfect. Um, corn corn oh with your corn soup oh yay thank you Phyllis mm -hmm. I'm so glad you're enjoying that wonderful so um Judy wants to know if buying jumbo shrimp by the number how many are likely to be in two-thirds of a pound oh good I require his math <laughs> yeah I'm not sure so let's see um this one is two this is a two pound bag and this has it says here 31 to 40 shrimp per pound yeah, so it's a lot of shrimp. Mm -hmm. But you can just take out and make the amount that you want. You know, you don't have mm -hmm. to. These recipes aren't too, you know, stringent. You can kind of do more or less depending on how many people you're cooking for. Yeah. And Teresa says she made turkey, zucchini, turkey. It says floats, but maybe she's, she meant boats. Boats. Oh, probably sauce. like the stuff. Yeah. Oh, with, that's with a great idea. Sauce. Mm hmm yeah, I like that. It's kind of scraping out the zucchini yeah. and then mm -hmm. filling it with like a nice little turkey. Make sure you've got your veggies, you've got your, your protein. Great. Everything. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for sharing. So nice to hear from all of you. So, um, okay, perfect. So um, a couple other things I included in this packet are a page on eating um, in season produce depending on the season, it only goes to June, this one, but I really like the, um, I really like the graphic. That's why I included it. So you can probably find other ones online that go, you know, through the seasons, but this one's really pretty because it has like all of the little drawings next to it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, this one I've, I've found is endearing. 
Um, and then I also included a page on storage of fruits and vegetables. This is from uh, Feeding Westchester. So I was surprised like at the, some of the things that you can store on your countertop. Um, so if you're running out of fridge space, you can keep your lemons, your limes, your, um, your peppers, your mangoes, oranges, cucumbers, even all of these things listed here can be stored on the countertop, which I thought was really interesting. Of course, they're not going to last as long, but they can be kept on the, on the countertop. So I like this is, you know, it's a nice thing to hang on the fridge and then kind of know, okay, I'm you know, running out of fridge space. You know, I can use, I can put this on the counter and it's fine. And then I included some tips here on eating right to reduce food waste. So I think um, often when you're just cooking for one or two people, you maybe don't end up using the whole bunch of carrots or the whole, you know, um, head of broccoli or whatever it is. So I included some tips here on kind of how to save, uh, save things and reduce food waste. And um, I know there's like, there's nothing worse than the feeling of buying produce and then throwing out half of it because it's gone bad. So I hope this will be useful to you as well as some tips for batch cooking um, that I included on this page too. So if you want to, you know, because a lot of recipes are for four, six, eight, ten 10 people, well, you can make them for that quantity and then freeze them. So I included some tips on batch cooking and freezing and things like that as well. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining. It's always such an honor to share this space with all of you. And um, if this is your first time, welcome. If you're back here after uh, many classes, I'm so honored that you're spending this time with us. And if you're coming back tomorrow, I'll see you then. We have a class on um, the healthy omnivore where we're really gonna be kind of digging into meat and understanding, you know, is it okay to eat meat? What kind of meat should we be eating? Um, is, is it uh, safe? Is it environmental? Is it healthy? You know, there's so many questions. And if you're, even if you're not a meat eater, or you're trying to cut down on eating meat, um, I really hope that this class will help you understand, you know, how to make the best choice for yourself. Um, and then on Friday, we have a wonderful class with our physician, um, Dr. Scott. He is going to be talking to us about inflammation and bone health. So if you're not signed up for that, join us because it will be a fantastic class, I'm sure of it. Thank you, Alita, for moderating. Everybody have a wonderful evening. We'll hope to Likewise, see you Likewise, thank you. Bye.